Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of Tig Time. Hi, I'm Mr. Tig. Today we're going to show you something special in a method of welding aluminum, especially if you don't have all the equipment, all the professional equipment, AC, high frequency, all of that. I've, I've talked to a lot of farmers and ranchers that uh, have water irrigation systems. And these water irrigation systems are made of aluminum. And the cattle walk over them, and they crush them, and they create cracks. And so they're trying to figure out how to fix them. And they don't have sophisticated equipment out there. So I want to show you a lost art in aluminum welding. If you have a DC machine, we're going to use DC positive. Yes, DC positive. Now there's a couple of little tricks of the trade. One is make sure your machine is set up on DC positive. The second thing is you can't use a conventional setup on TIG. Uh, you're going to have to use an oversize. And when I say an oversize, you're going to have to use a very large tungsten. For instance, if I were welding this 16 gauge material, and let's just uh, simulate this as a, as a water irrigation pipe. It is about 16 or, or 18 gauge, I'm not quite sure, but we're going to weld on it and I'll show you how to do it. But what we're going to do is we're, we're going to replace this 1 16th diameter tungsten with this gargantua tungsten. And we need that. We need to have the large tungsten. Now what's going to happen is we're going to have an arc initiation. And if your machine has arc start, great. If it doesn't, scratch start. And what will happen is it'll ball back to a certain point and then it'll quit balling. Once it quits balling, then the heat is transferred into your part. You sit, you dwell, you watch it. You get a half a cleaning cycle out of this. Now it's pretty tough to do because the arc is going to try to go out on you. So keep the arc very, very close, very, very tight, and you'll get better and better at it. But if the arc goes out, just re-scratch start. So just know that all I'm watching is I'm watching an oxide layer leave, but eventually I'll see a liquid puddle. Once I get that puddle, make sure you control it by dabbing filler material. So all we're doing is we're fixing a crack or we're fixing a home project or something like that. So pretty cool technique. Uh, let me change this torch over, get my gear on, I'll show you how to do it. You can see the cleaning action taking place and it's trying to go liquid and it is liquid now. You know, so if I'm fixing a crack or fixing something around the house, this is okay. I mean, it's not terribly controllable. Um, I do have to keep a real tight arc on it. And you can see I get, I get control as the tungsten balls up. I get better control, and then when I dab filler, I get control again. But it's uh, just trying to bounce around, you know, kind of like lightning. Okay, let's recap this setup. Now what I did was I put a 1 8 inch diameter tungsten in and I ground it to a point and you can see that I've got a little ball on here and when I made my first weld it was at a point so it tried to wander a little bit on me. Now as it balled up and I got better control of it you can see the second weld I had a lot more control of. Now I also want to show you the setup You can see the tungsten's 1 8 inch diameter. But I've got a collet in here, and I've talked about them before, but uh, I've gotten some questions on them recently. And this is, this is called a wedge collet, and it's not like the conventional collet, and I'm going to put the other collet right next to it. Conventional collet has a little slit in it, so when you tighten down the back cap, it tightens down. And, and that's fine, it works pretty good, but the wedge collet doesn't have a slit at all. And the only way you can release the tungsten is to loosen the back cap, push the tungsten inward, back in, and it releases and comes back out. Now a few of you, I've sent these special collets as an upgrade. And uh, I've gotten a couple of emails that said, hey, I think, uh, I think you made a mistake. 
Well, I really didn't. I just wanted to upgrade you. So just know if I send that in one of your kits, uh, it's the upgrade. It's the wedge, call it. It'll handle the amperage better, and it doesn't twist after a lot of hours of use. So just know that. And just know that this right here is good for thin wall aluminum only. I wouldn't do anything uh, really under, or I wouldn't do anything more than eighth inch thick. Eighth inch thick is pretty tough to get hot. And what you'll see is that tungsten starting to ball up and it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's going to tell you whether or not you can weld that thick of aluminum. So just know thin wall aluminum, that's what it's designed for. It's DC+. Plus. I use straight argon. This is not a mix. This is not with helium or anything else. 15 CFH of argon and uh, DC+. Plus. So thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.